So what are five examples of messages that you can send to women that are likely to kill her attraction? Now, some of the examples I'm gonna be giving you in this video are gonna be a little bit surprising. They may even be messages that you thought were there to build attraction, and they are in fact killing it off. Um, so please listen carefully, because I'm gonna be giving you five very specific examples of what not to send when it comes to messaging women that you like. As a little side note, of course, as a dating coach, my name is Hayley Quinn. I'm going to have to say that if the attraction doesn't seem to be there on message, it is more likely that that turn off happened earlier on in the process of meeting her, whether it was something you talked about or she just wasn't that engaged with you to begin with. However, there are definitely some things that you can do on message which are not going to help you out in the process of building that connection with her. So let's look at the surprising attraction killing message number one. So attraction killer number one is going too sexual too soon. This could be something like saying, you've got the legs for it, or I could just imagine what your body would feel like. Now, at a certain point in the dating process, when you've already had some physical intimacy, she may really enjoy you making comments about certain aspects of her physical body. However, early on in the dating process, before she's you've kind of got together and there's definitely that attraction and that connection, it can actually be really jarring. Now, a lot of the time when I'm working with guys, they tell me that they try and put this more sexy content into the messages because they simply do not want to be seen as just a friend. They want to make it like loud and clear to the woman that they're messaging that they see her as a romantic prospect. However, by going about communicating that sexuality in a way that is too explicit, it doesn't come across as a finessed, mature, man who's got knowledge and empathy for women. In fact, it just comes across a little bit clumsy and a little bit try hard. What she'll read into that is that you haven't really picked up on where she's at emotionally within the conversation and she'll feel put off by the clumsy attempt to sexualize things. So generally, here's what my rule of thumb for making messages sexy. Do not go explicit, go implicit. Avoid making references to her body parts or touching her or stuff like that. Weigh it before she's really reciprocated and you've started to form that connection in real life. So the second slightly surprising attraction killing message that you may not have thought of is kind of along the same lines. Now there is a lot of dating advice out there kicking around the internet that will be encouraging you when you're messaging women to be, to be cocky, to be funny, to you know, show that you assume that she's attracted to you. Now, whilst there's truth in many of these principles, and I'm not here to shoot them all down, often when you try to do arrogant and it's not coming from a sincere and congruent place within you, it can again come across as mismatched and kind of a little bit try hard. So if you send her a message like, so when are you gonna come over and cook me dinner? And again, you've gone in with a really kind of I would say that it's over skipped confidence. It's definitely gone into arrogance message. And if she's not really feeling it that much, instead of it sounding exciting and challenging and direct towards her, she's probably just going to be like, <laughs> no. Uh, and in fact, it's the mismatch between you not being able to read emotionally where she's at in the interaction and you by you trying really hard it's kind of communicating that you're way more into her than she is into you. And if anything, that's gonna be a turn off. So instead, I would really advise that you think it more about matching and mirroring her tone in the conversation. So rather than constantly trying to step up or project this image of yourself, which may not even feel sincere to you, instead of doing that, listen to how she's presenting herself within the conversation, match the volume, length of messages, and the engagement levels, and that's actually a much safer bet in terms of how to further that communication with her. So these first two attraction killers are all about doing way too much, but you know, you can also do way too little. Um, attraction killer number three that may be a surprise to you is using kind of boring daily check-in messages like, how's your day going? Now, why this usually comes from is you are attracted to the woman, you really want to keep her interested in you. And so you feel this pressure like, how do I keep her interested in me? And because of this, you feel like you need to kind of keep the conversation going. 
Now, in case you haven't noticed this yet, keeping a conversation going with a person you do not know very well is really hard. Uh, it's especially hard to make that conversation really exciting and fun. So whether you're using dating apps or you're messaging her, try to avoid daily contact before you're at the right time and place for that. Instead, if you know you can't see each other for the next couple of weeks, it's probably better to send her two or three messages on a week or two or three days a week where you reach out and then reach out with something purposeful and interesting, whether that's a picture of something cool you're up to, a link to something she might be interested in, a little voice note out of the blue can work wonders to spike her interest. But what will kill that attraction and the mystery is just the daily repetitive, how's your morning going message. That can feel very comforting when you're in a relationship and when you're really connected to someone, but often early in the dating process before she's really feeling it, that can kill off the attraction. So attraction killer number four. Now this is something I see lots of guys doing in the world of dating apps, so watch out. It is when you accidentally use loads of cliches to talk about your life. So for instance, if someone asks you about your job, you could say it pays the bills or it keeps me busy. Um, you may ask her similarly kind of slightly dull questions. Now, when you reference and talk about your life in a way that is cliched, and by cliched, I mean people have spoken about their work and their life in that way many times before, it really lacks personality and it doesn't seem like you're coming from a place where your life is amazing and interesting and you're really passionate about it. Now, that might not always be realistic. For you, your job at the moment might be just to pay some bills, but there's going to be a more charismatic way that you can phrase that. So you could say, for instance, instead of saying it pays the bills, you could say, um, I'm working towards X, Y, or Z. I'm saving for this, but right now this job's pretty good. So you can show your purpose of doing a job that pays the bills, which we all have to do. Um, so because of that, it's better just to avoid the cliches because by using a cliche, it's really not showing how you're different and unique to the other guys out there. So attraction killer number five is kind of another use of cliche, but this time it's cliches in the questions that you ask her. So this is be, this could be something like, so have you been up to anything interesting recently? Or so what do you do for fun? Oh, it's just not an exciting way to phrase that. I understand that your purpose here is you're thinking, mm, I want to change the conversation off of this topic right now, which is not that interesting. Maybe you're talking about work and it's not really going anywhere. And you want to make the conversation more playful and fun. So your intent is good. I just think work on that execution of how you do it. Because whenever we use phrases or words or sentences that everybody else uses all the time, um, it becomes really like small talk, or as I like to call it, it's like chatbot. Um, it's so impersonal and it's so replicable that it doesn't do anything to prompt an original response from her, nor does it enable her to see what an amazing guy you actually are. And we are all interesting and unique individuals. Sometimes it's just our ability to communicate that lets us down. So I hope you've enjoyed this video showing you these five attraction killers. If you want to ask me some advice on your messages and get some direct feedback from myself and my coaching team, I'd really advise that you check out my Hayley Quinn Club. I've put a link below this video on our forum. Myself and the coaches are always there giving you specific advice back. So if you want to work on your messaging, this could be an amazing one for you. Um, also, I'd love it if you could comment beneath this video, share, like it, do whatever you want and subscribe if you've enjoyed the content here and hopefully I'll see you again very soon.